Welcome to our Reading Month Caribbean Contemporary Classics Week, sponsored by Hoda Education. I am Jameson Alphos, and it is an honor to be your moderator for such a prestigious Hoda Education event. The theme for Reading Month is All Hands on Deck for Literacy, and we are indeed privileged to be bolstered by an invaluable sponsor and partner such as Hoda Education. Four students from schools within the education community have been selected to read excerpts from the Horda Education Caribbean Contemporary Classics Collection. This is a collection of vibrant stories overflowing with life and the acute observations about society. In addition, each student will provide a personal reflection on the text followed by the recommendation. Please stay tuned as you are enlightened. Becca Lam is a Caribbean Contemporary Classics written by Z. Edgar. This novel is the record of a few months in the life of Becca and her family. Becca and her friend, Toysi Kualu, are on the threshold of change from childhood to adulthood. Their personal struggles and tragedies play out against a backdrop of political upheaval and regeneration as the British colony of Belize gears up for universal suffrage and progression towards independence. Let's listen to Sage James, who is a fourth form student at the Castries Comprehensive School. She's a voracious reader who spends hours curled up in a book. In addition, she enjoys listening to music and shopping. Becca shuddered at the thought of the leather belt her dad wore. Sometimes Bill Lamb would come home from work, the tensions of the workday raging within him, and Lilia, filled with the frustrations of her own day, would sit down to tell him of Becca's insolence, her laziness, and ingratitude. The story invariably concluded with Lilia saying, And the worst thing of all, Bill, is that she lied to me. I could see she hadn't swept the attic properly. Why did she lie to me? Because he was in a hurry at those times to have his tea before going for an hour's relaxation at the club, Bill Lamb would say impatiently, I don't want to hear a word from you, Becca. Get upstairs. I am going to put an end to this once and for all. His felt that askew on his head. Bill Lamb would follow Becca upstairs, stamping his feet with emphasis. On the landing, Becca would begin to scream at the top of her voice before the belt touched her skin. No, daddy, no, daddy. Between lashes, Bill Lamb paused to ask, Do you know why I am beating you? No, Daddy, Becca would reply, not because of the thing you did, but because you lied. I firmly believe that the action of beating children should never happen in a household. Therefore, I do not agree with the actions of Bill Lamb. In fact, I believe that corporal punishment should be abolished in both schools and households. Beating children can cause them to become violently aggressive. It makes them fear their loved ones. They can easily learn that this behavior is an accepted way to react to situations. They could use the same tactics in dealing with conflicts with their peers. Even educators have already seen the wisdom of not using physical punishment to discipline students. It is now a law that corporal punishment should not be used in schools. Discipline should include speaking with young people, listening to them, Asking questions and reasoning with them can help them to understand their actions and the consequences of their actions. Perhaps the situation with Becca would have turned out differently, and her relationship with her father could have been even better if that approach was used. At those times when Becca's behavior forced Lilia to complain, Becca's dad resorted to calling her names. He couldn't understand how a girl with enough food to eat decent clothes to wear, and a roof over her head could be such a trial. Becca didn't know which she disliked most, the beatings or the name calling. The worst and most hurtful name of all was when her dad called her phony. Liar and thief were bad, but those words didn't really worry her. She knew she would never reach his majesty prison where Uncle Crow, Granny Ivy's second son, worked as a warder. The physical abuse is accompanied by verbal abuse. Name calling can be just as bad, or for some, even worse than physical abuse. I can only imagine how Becca feels, being called horrible names by her own parents. Our words matter. They can build us up or break us down. 
We should make sure that what we say build us up. When her dad returned from the club that night, he came up to Becca's bedside in the attic where Lilia was rubbing Becca's head and saying, It was all my fault, Bill. I can't understand why I complained so much to you about Becca. She had such a pretty smile, Bill. Such a pretty smile. That was the nicest thing about her face. Looking down at Becca's lip, Bill Lam said, She still has a pretty smile. Smile, Becca. Show your mother what a pretty smile you still have. Turning to go downstairs again, Bill Lam said, Don't worry, pet. Your gran will rub it with cocoa fat when it heals and then it won't scar. But although Granny Ivy rubbed it every night for a long time with cocoa fat, the scar browned over but remained visible, and Becca eventually gave up all the hope that it would completely disappear. While Granny Ivy may be able to address the external scars of physical abuse, there are also internal scars, including low self-worth, poor self-esteem, and a fear of taking risks. While lotions may fade bruises, what could possibly heal those deeper wounds? I would recommend this text, especially to parents. It could help them to properly comprehend how their children feel when they are hurt by their loved ones. This is also a good text for school-aged children. You will find that you can relate very well to Becca Lam. There is also a pressure to do well at school, including getting good grades. I would encourage everyone to head over to the Hoda Education website at www.hodaeducation.co.uk to check out the other Caribbean contemporary classic texts. You may find a new one that you like. Becca and her family are always clashing over her disobedience. Can you relate to this situation? How do you handle conflict with your family and friends? What are some of the interesting events that are occurring over your way? To obtain a copy, I urge you to visit the local bookstores, Delivery Express and People's Discount Book and More, both located in Castries, and Books and More located in Miku. There, you can choose from a range of titles in classic contemporary fiction from the heart of the Caribbean. Also, look out for our upcoming book fairs at People's Discount Book and More on Victoria Street, Castries from May 19th to 21st and Books and More in Miku Village on the second week of July. You can also visit Horda Education website at www.hordaeducation.co.uk.